Greetings and welcome to another uh, and to a new let's play. Welcome to Homeworld Deserts of Karak. A prequel to the uh, Homeworld series proper, produced uh, by uh, created by Blackbird Interactive and published by Gearbox Software. Yeah, this is a game I was never really expecting, or knew even that existed. Through osmosis I've learned that this is, this was based on a mod at some point, and then Gearbox learned about it and developed it into a proper game. Sort of. And... Well... I don't hate it. It's just that the story, I mean, this is a prequel of this, uh, essentially this details the story about how they went, uh, how, how the expedition to the uh, Kartsobo went. And it's complete fan fiction. Which is alright. It just kind of screws with the original lore that I like very much, and I admit, uh, holding on to lore from. Uh, the original writers on the manual. It's maybe um, a bit too strict. I mean, there's always people who cling on to uh, lore from their favorite franchises too much, but I, yeah, I. There are a couple of moments in the story that really, really push me to say no. No. That being said, I'll just give you uh, a few of the cliff notes of the history of Karak, which I would give you more directly. Unfortunately, I don't have a second screen available, so I'm, I'm trying to do this from memory. Essentially, in the timeline of the Kushan people, which is measured in KDS, and I am no, I'm not sure what the uh, KDS stands for, <clears throat> Around the year 500 KDS, two of the greatest uh, religious kiffs essentially got caught in a feud that became the Heresy Wars that lasted for near nearly 300 years. The biggest kiffs in that case were being the Galcian and um, the, uh, the Simid, I believe. I can't quite remember, but that's not the point. And in those 300 years of fighting, they almost completely wiped out the Kushan people with the entire struggle. Um, which isn't good, of course. Anyway, and but uh, towards the end of that, at some point, uh, one of the technological kiffs living far in the north uh, invented chemical weapons. Now it is not stated exactly what they invented, but from context in the historical briefing, uh, I'm gonna assume gunpowder and possibly grenades. Because it is sort of mentioned that they uh, managed to roll into hell, um, hell territories with repeater rifles and steam tanks. Which sounds awesome! You know, if they had actually done that story, that would have been a much more interesting game, I think. Anyway, uh, the moment uh, Kif Nabel came out with those weapons and essentially asked any village that they entered, Will you please help us stop all this madness and bring our people together? Which most people said, Yes, we will do that. In any, any case, that pretty much ended the Heresy Wars. Although, there was still never a true un un united Kushan people, up until the point that they found the Guidestone 
during the expedition here. Thing is, the main opposing force in this story is Kif Galsin, which, according to the lore from the original games, was almost completely wiped out by the entire conflict. Not a not in small part because of their own biases. I mean, Galsin are seen as the toughest Kif, able to survive anything. That's that was their entire mantra. I mean, their religious practices told them. They were a cursed race, created to suffer by a Sajuk. So, they made themselves tough to endure the punishment. And that makes sense that they survived. But the amounts in which they survived... That's right. Anyway. I'm getting off track and possibly a little bit well, too much in it. The expedition, <laughs> expedition in question here is set about 300 years after uh, the end of the heresy wars so the level of technology on display is possible but I'm gonna have to say not likely considering Karak which is the mud ball we are talking about was a set was com was very mineral poor they didn't have resources to build most of the things they did. Which is why the losses sustained during the Heroes of War was, was so bad, because they couldn't re afford to rebuild everything every time. Especially if it was just going to be killed again afterwards. Uh, but aside from that... <laughs> There wasn't as essentially there weren't any great wars after the Heresy Wars is what I'm trying to say. Even the launch of the uh, of the um, satellite which found the uh, the Kartoba wreck, there was a mass massive protest by uh, some religious cultists, but there was no no significant death aside from the main leader of that protest who broke through the security cordon, sat underneath the rocket that was going to launch the thing, prayed feverishly to his chosen deity, and was properly vaporized by the exhaust of the uh, of the rocket as it was launched. But that was the only casualty of that. And then afterwards, they set up an expedition. But in, in any case, let's actually start getting into the campaign itself. Because I have been talking for a little bit too long already, and I should really not do that. Now, I'll be playing on classic diff difficulty. Not because I think I can handle it, but because it's probably a good enough challenge. And I will bring up whenever I disagree with the choice in story. But let's enjoy the story for what it is. Also, apologies for the loading times. They may take a while. I can't currently afford better hard drives. And also apologies about my mic quality. Unfortunately, I'm reduced to my headset mic while I wait for my main mic to be prepared. But at least you can hear me now. Our planet is dying. The desert grows with every passing year. The world is at war. But there is hope. An object has been detected deep within the Great Banded Desert. It has been called the Jiraki Object, the primary anomaly. We believe it may hold the key to our salvation. An expedition to retrieve it is being prepared.
Now, admittedly, that is well done. Nice transition. They also ran a, a very beautiful desert. Which is quite tricky, since deserts are usually not portrayed all that interestingly. objectives through this channel. Before departure, we need to run essential tests on our key capabilities. Vehicle production, resource salvaging, and combat operations. Time is of the essence, so let's run through these quickly. Fleet operations, is your channel clear? Affirmative. I will be providing all non-critical updates on unit production, research, resource salvaging, and all carrier systems through this channel. Copy that. Stand by to initiate production test. First, deploy a salvager from the command carrier Capisi. Snarky Command Ops Online. I will be relaying commentary through this channel. Right. Let us begin. Alright, so I'm gonna guess that the premise behind this fan fiction is that the heresy was essentially never really salvager ended. Online. Stand by to commence resource test. Order the salvager to gather nearby resources located here. Which would explain why they would need such a military base and waste resources, essentially. <sighs> I mean, a part of why I'm not entirely Rachel, buying this. The Capisi support cruiser has suffered a mechanical failure and requires immediate repairs before departure. Stop interrupting me. Is Use your base runner to repair the support cruiser located here. Yeah, I will do so when I get to it. It's essentially that they are going after the Jiraki object uh, for salvation, which boggles the mind. Why? Why would the Jiraki object be salvation? They didn't know that at the time. They couldn't tell that. The but deposit it, depleted. it kind of usurps the point of um, why they were trying to get to Higara in the first place. 
Because they found a stone that said, This plant is your home. Not because the Karak was running out of life. I mean, that's already why most of the kiffs were located on the North Pole, because that was the only temperate region on Karak. Ah, uh, what a well. Let's just repair that this port cruiser. Get it back up and running. <sighs> I know, I know. I should Initiating think repair. more in the theme of the setting, not the one that I think they should have used. But Repairs completed. Good work, Rachel. Stand by for combat test. In order to produce combat vehicles, we will need to invest time and resources in upgrading our tech. The first step is to upgrade the Capici's advanced manufacturing facilities. Once that is done, we will be able to build light attack vehicles. Capici reading. Research completed. Light attack vehicle fabrication now online. Produce three light attack vehicles from the Capici. Light attack vehicle in service. Now, the light attack vehicles light do attack look kind of cute. Online. Like dune buggies with uh, machine guns on top. Light attack. light attack vehicles ready. Target drones are now ready for weapons testing. Use the light attack vehicles to target and destroy the drones located here. Made it. Got eyes on hostile. There they go. Those are bullseyes. I mean, I know you're trying to recapture the magnificence of tests the original. Are complete. Uh, but Give me a go, no go for launch. Operations, go. Bridge, go. Rachel, science teams in place. We're go. Engineering, go. Confirm all systems go. I mean, I know you're trying to go for the all inspiring Suggest launch of the mother. We are go for launch. But you're trying to overdo it a little bit. <laughs> launch Why do will be perilous. But if successful, we will change the course of history forever and secure our future for generations to come. Personal log, science officer Rachel Sajet, expedition carrier Capisi. We've launched three months ahead of schedule and just in time. The Gaussian threat was far greater than we had anticipated. As the lead scientist on this expedition, I'm more convinced than ever that my brother was right. That what lies out there amongst the dunes holds the key to our survival on this planet, and possibly beyond. We have no choice now but to believe. Hmm. I'm not so sure. Also, the Jaraki object is uh, named for the engineer that thought of the satellite. That accidentally found it. 
would have been nice if you'd mentioned it at least, game. Uh, just so many things. Um, but that'll do for this episode. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully I'll see you all next time.